right? Here's how many bedrooms there are, how many bathrooms there are, given that basement finish. So the assessors are starting to hone in on that data to that because there's a tremendous amount of accurate data out there uh, for that. And the assessors echo really that also. Okay. And it was my impression from Senator Collins that I think he was driving at under-assessed properties in downtown. That was a lot of his question and a lot of his concern with assessments in downtown. Well, I, th I think one of the things that uh, PJ is referring to, and I agree with him, is his death. Uh, in Douglas County, we have quite a bit of inconsistency. And uh, he, he is absolutely in the right. And, uh, you know, you look at some of the areas of the city, uh, I think we just talked recently about the, uh, the Regency. The Regency has property that's been reduced in value. And then on the south side of Pacific Street around 80th, it's gone up. And it just doesn't, there's no pattern or no additional sanity. And of course, I, I uh, really feel as the county attorney in Douglas County, who has authority for setting the valuation of property, and he said the county assessor. So I frankly think we should abolish the board of equalization and uh, let, the, let the county assessor do their thing and let them get done with it. You know, the way it happens in Douglas is we have, you know, five to six thousand dollars. Uh, excuse me, about appeals. And um, so we get them, the county clerk does a great job in sorting them. You can see how much they've gone up, how much they've gone down percentage wise and dollars and all the rest of it. But uh, what happens is we start getting that very late in the, in the uh, uh, process so that by uh, Tuesday morning when we're supposed to do these, I don't think most of the commissioners have had a chance to even to look at all the property. And so we just go through and say, okay, everything's okay with all of our measures. And uh, last year, I challenged three of the 5,000. And no other commissioner did, but I did. And I did Cashew's Restaurant, got reduced. And I did a big home on Dodge Street that was raised by a million dollars and got dropped by about 900,000. The county board agreed. And then one private home near a Mary Arcane Parish on in West Omaha, uh, the home was above everybody else. Uh, we go to mill on that, I would guess. Those were three out of 5,000. It's not a good process for us, so I don't know. Uh, we need either more time to really look at it, or we should just say, give up and say, you know, this is working. Lastly, I want to say, we're getting sued all the time by our county assessor. And uh, that's just ridiculous because, I mean, she has, she believes in it, she believes us. We're on the other side, so we spend all this money on attorneys, not that I mind that. But anyway, um, seriously, it's not a good situation. I think we have to seriously take a real look at board of equalization, what it's doing, how it's functioning, uh, and uh, maybe find some drugs down to create out there some mess. It's not working for us. Well, I think it, I think we all have a mess as far as SARS is the same thing. I mean, the same identical house across Harrison are assessed separately and differently. And sad to say, we start to desire. 
but they, you know, these other counties uh, really have a highway superintendent that, that is hired by the county board as a hired employee. Uh, so there's, there's really only those four elected. Okay, so now, what's the issue you have particularly? Because I'm just, just asking, what's the issue you have with the engineer particularly? Or you have an issue or you all just want to? What's the issue? Are you, are you all having a particular issue with the engineer right now? <laughs> That's kind of 
have the problems. So if you go to the New York Times online and read the article, it might be beneficial for all of us. Yeah. I have to see a particular meeting. I mean, you know, prior to writing on the defense attorney, so I was always trying to attack the integrity of the impossible under a regime. And uh, they're actually pretty accurate in most cases. We can get false negatives because those genes also register other biological materials that occur naturally in the body. But there are ways of getting around them, and I will definitely look up that article and read it. But uh, there are many different ways for testing, and they get some false positives. Because oftentimes when people 
we're, we're bringing the, the advocacy groups for those, those sides are also, are also coming in. And one other thing I would just add on what Carrie said about uh, LB 247, that wasn't even a bill that the county asked Senator Bowles to carry that, but she carried that on her own after she had discussions with Senator Lynn again about uh, that Senator Lynn, I believe it was her niece, saw this statute in, in um, Virginia and said, God, wouldn't it be great to do something like this in Nebraska? Senator Lynn and Senator Bowles talked, Senator Bowles agreed to carry it. The bill came forward. Our jail director is the one who said, holy buckets, would this be great for her? For our jail population, so we sort of we jumped on it in support of that, that concept. So uh, that's not even something that necessarily started as a county priority, but it certainly become one. Yeah. For instance, I think we have eleven people who uh, their competencies in file evaluation. Thank you. 
too much money because then if we don't spend it, then we're going to get punished, which is what's happening now.
These active bills, you know, my board has taken a, a formal position on to support or oppose, and so these are these items because it's a carryover session, it's super short session. Um, you know, we're gonna we're gonna continue to push these bills. You know, we've already taken a position on them, and so we're gonna push these bills forward, and then hopefully have a few more items that are gonna be new that we can get a senator to introduce, and I'll go over those in just a couple minutes. Um, but to touch on the bills, like the bills that we actually build have a big deal to us. Um, on that very first page, right under active, um, LB20, required voter approval of public building commission bonds. This is an item we have opposed. We're going to continue to strongly oppose it. Um, as you all probably already know, you, you already know, um, you know, this is a method for cities and counties to um, you know, work to cooperate together, work to build buildings, et cetera. So this is definitely an item. Only, only two cities in town. That's it. Yeah, you're right. Two cities in town. So, um, you know, and so it's very valuable. It, it, it exists in statute for, for a reason, and it's valuable. So, um, you know, as it. So the, it's an item that we do oppose. It's LB20, and we will continue to oppose it. If, if I may add to that, LB20 takes away the very power and
property um, inspections to go from every six years to three years. Um, and that would be not only a significant additional cost, um, but you know, there's essentially more additional work to be done in a short period of time. So, um, so anyway, yeah, LB 29 is something that we strongly oppose. If you want to turn to this page, page two, and this came up earlier um, with Jennifer Sarkin's uh, presentation. I'm just noting it as well. We are also strongly opposed to this LRNCA. It's at the very bottom of the page. Um, and, you know, looking at, really looking at any methods that limit the total non property tax revenue that is raised by subdivisions. So, um, you know, again, that's on our radar spending lids. So, um, just, just wanted to know that that is one of our items. As far as the new, um, new discussions, um, I think somewhat of a, of a simplification item, and I don't have a document to pass out today about this. My board is still, we're, we're actually going to have an HR committee tomorrow to discuss more of the legislative items, and then I'll, that'll go on to our full board. Um, so this isn't, I guess my board hasn't approved all of these yet, but just to note, um, we are, and we're going to have an additional discussion today on it, but it's going to be um, something revolved around home rule. Commissioner Rogers is going to take that item, but hopefully we can see an item filed, a bill filed, um, that allows some home rule authority that they have in, in many other states for your larger counties, uh, Florida, Illinois. Um, and, and so that's, that, again, that's something Commissioner Rogers is going to bring up and discuss in a little bit more detail. One item I was going to say, like just to out there. You may see an item from us that's filed um, that would provide Chapter 43 dealing with juvenile justice records. Um, essentially, we're looking for some cleanup in that statute to where um, more, that there's more sharing of information, like, to, to, to simplify that statute for sharing of information between entities and agencies where we can actually track some of the data better rather than having one agency not be able to share information with another agency or probation sharing with, you know, uh, the county, the city, the youth center, etc. So we'd like to clean up that statute a little bit. You may see something that's introduced on our behalf um, that kind of moves in that direction. So we have some more data tracking. We're able to look at, um, you know, come in and out of our system on a long-term basis much, much easier than it currently exists. So that would be a change in Chapter 43. Again, you may see that introduced on our behalf. Um, you know, again, anything, we're always on the fence as far as unfunded mandates. Um, you know, anytime we can get a bill introduced that will take over some of the space that, or the cost of space that we have to lease out to the state, that's, that's something that we definitely support and, you know, push going forward. And beyond that, I'll, uh, I guess, I'll, Mr. Rogers, if you can just one roll. I mean, to add one color, I think Mark goes is piece about the, uh, the statute change with the data. Uh, the quickest version that I can tell you how to explain it is that there are a lot of conversations around the county with JDI and some of that data, and JDI is the juvenile detention alternative initiative. The goal is to play money ball. Uh, if you're familiar with Billy Green, Oakland A's, how they use data, all driven from that. But when I had a discussion in the room with the on our police department, that person, Mary Vice, who runs uh, our juvenile probation, the city's attorney and, and the county's attorney. It seems like this statute is had, they interpret it as a flag honor that no information can be exchanged juvenile wise unless it's done for research purposes. And done in that way, this data is four, six, a year old. You can't put any real time information to it. OPD interprets it the same as only law enforcement can access some of this data, and the county attorneys are not comfortable with employing a person in there to do some of this recycling. I mean, even examples of when we originally did this and it got swatted down, there's basically a number, no identifying data, a base number tied to each kid in the system to be able to pull that number. The concerns are, and when Senator Lake had a meeting at NACO, 
uh, probably about two months ago, we talked about general juvenile justice issues. One of the concerns brought, brought by Senator Hansen Brooks was the sealed records issue. And the point was this, this should not hurt the sealed records issue because there's no identifiable data being traced. For instance, we should be able to run this with some of the data they initially ran, ran numbers of this district that you're in, and you have cost uh, kids in detention, numbers of absences, lack of services, and that's the stuff that you're trying to tie together to say what's the need. It has nothing to do with seal records, but every time this is in a room, they say this statute hinders us. And so the point is to make some tweaks to be able to use that data in a more uh, offensive way to get ahead of the curve. So that's the color.
Erickson's statute and having this be a different statute that says something similar but different, it doesn't change the other existing statute, it adds something to it and it conflicts. Right. So that's, and, and I'm kind of talking off the top of my head. <coughs> so maybe what we need, I'm sorry, I talked to someone who just said that, but maybe what we need to do is get the Bar Association in the loop when we come up with our legislative priorities as we haven't done in the past. Absolutely, and you can send, Bill Miller is our lobbyist, you can send it to him, you can send it to me and I'll forward it on. Bill sends it to all of the groups in the Bar who deal with those areas, so this is Real Estate Probate Committee, and they have, they have opinions on this, I've been to those meetings, so the quicker you get it to them, the better. We meet this week, by the way, so I mean, I'm happy to you know, put things in, but to me, there's no downside in having the bar know what you're doing and why, because they will vet it through those people and they'll know what the issues are, and a lot of times they can be worked out. A lot of times they are things that don't really have to do with the underlying purpose of the bill. They're technical things that can be worked out if you're early and they get lost in the mix and then
Can you hear me now? I'm getting over a slight cold, sorry, so I kind of get a little husky. Um, so the, the issue kind of becomes what we, what we deem uniform and lose efficiency. Um, and, and for large cases, you know, cases that are in excess of the threshold amount or, um, you know, or, or if you kill your superficial hearing, that, that has to go in front of the full board. So it's, it's one of those questions of which poison you want to pick. And if you have a
But if I read the correct way, you're in favor of eliminating categories of equalization and in favor of eliminating circuits. So. Yeah. Well, welcome to my world. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't even want to ask you about that.
with a bunch of different departments that we share. The city of Lincoln does by any budget. You know, as I have new county board members coming on, some of them have ties to the legislature. Well, the legislature does by any of budgets. So, so over the last couple of years, the discussion has kept coming forward on should we start talking about doing biennial budgets versus the annual budgets that we're doing right now? Now, I, I also understand right now we don't have the capability of doing that. Right now, it's only municipalities and NRDs. So, it sounds like NRDs are just kind of our hot topic today, but they have that ability to do that. I'm looking for just discussion with this group on thoughts on biennial budgets. Should it be something that we look at to, because to even do that, we have to get legislation done. I'm looking to see, and I don't know if Larry or, or John can provide, you know, do we have other states out there that have counties doing biennial budgets? So, that's what this discussion is about. So, I'd love to hear from Sarpy and Douglas they go, what are your thoughts on buying new budgets? Well, what's the advantage? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, you're doing, you're doing a one budget every two years. So you're doing department budget areas once every two years. So I would assume there's a possibility of time saving. Can't you just go ahead and do another budget for the next year without any authority from anybody and then decide whether or not it's on target? I mean, I, I don't see why you have to get the law changed right yet forecast. I mean, we have I think you're pretty well, well, yeah, I think you could forecast, but but I guess, I, I mean, if we're going to do some, if we're going to do some of that, should we should we start thinking about whether buying any budgets should be allowable for county government? I, I don't think you need permission. I think you just go ahead and do it. You need to use it or don't. We have uh, 17 marketing units in Douglas County, so it's a little tough for us to predict what they're going to ask for or what they're going to set up, you know, what's going to happen. So, I mean, that, that's a big problem for us. And then, uh, I guess that's the biggest one I'd say, but I don't know why you can't just go ahead and do it without any authority and just see how it works. Well, and, and, we, and we possibly could. You yeah. know, the other, the other little city of Lincoln has all kinds of bargaining units. You know, those. Those are items that are out there that are still being included in buying budgets. So, um, so I mean, I, I guess I just didn't know if if any if either one of you other counties had, had started thinking about this at all. I think we're having enough trouble with one. Conceptually, a neat idea and a time saver. I think where we go into the issue is because we're statutorily bound to have a balanced budget, and we're always waiting to see on the revenue side what the property taxes are going to be and how they're going to get valued. And like this year, we when we first went into the budget, we assumed that it would be like five percent, and it came out to be seven percent. So all of a sudden. As we got into the process, we had 2%, which we could use to fund the different departments that were coming in, primarily driven by uh, cost increases in criminal justice that were over their targets. So we used that extra money, that extra 2%, to give them more money than we had originally anticipated with the goal of coming out with a balanced budget. And so I think if, if you do it a year ahead of time, when you don't do necessarily know what's going to be happening with um, property tax receipts along with some, you know, a lot of times we get the unfunded mandates that come in that significantly increase some of the expenses. I think we always get to the situation where the balance, it's a balancing act right. that just comes down to, you know, the so, so my dollars. So my question, Joe, would be, could you have made your budget to take care of that issue? I've got to take care of that issue on an annual basis. So, so to me, you could go through the amendment process and take care of that issue. So, I, I'm just, I just want to hear pros and cons. 
Um, because I have, I'm not definite on saying, yes, we need to do that. I just need to hear things on saying, that's a crazy idea, or that's a great idea. I, I'm kind of doing some research, and I'm just kind of looking for, for pros and cons so that we can figure out. Because I don't know, maybe your word's different than mine. My word just doesn't give up on it. They just keep coming back, keep coming back, and keep coming back. So, I, I just want to make one more comment. And you have intellect that the city of Omaha has, does not have the same kind of structure we do. Uh, we have, the, the city of Omaha doesn't have, in the state of Nebraska, don't have the same kind of structure that we have with the intellect and officials who run their offices autonomously, except for the budget. So, and, and if I could turn to the forecast, you can like the I'd be interested elected officials, what they would say about it, because if I were elected official, I would not like that idea, because then it requires me to forecast out two years rather than one. So, I don't know, maybe there are elected officials in the room, at least one, but um, I don't know if there's any other. Well, I mean, elected officials other than the commission. <laughs> so, what do, you, what do you have to say about it? No, I mean it fluctuates, but you know the, the one thing that that if you think about budgeting, you know, and we get into the same thing is what's our property tax going to increase by? You know, what two-year budget allows you to do is figure out how much in dollars do you need, and not base it off of I'm going to get eight percent next year. Well, we don't do that, but it, it is different. It's lower we have to cut, and it's higher we have. The criminal justice is killing us. In Omaha is approaching three hundred million dollars a year. The city and the county together, police. We have a thousand police officers. Do you, do you have Do you have to amend your budget on the annual basis right now? We, we do. We do. What? Once a year, we do a supplement in January. I have to through the budget, but it's it's really not material. It's usually around uh, uh, one. Less than two percent, so it's, it's not a material amendment. But it, and ours probably isn't either. But, but I go through the amendment process on an annual basis. So, so do we. <coughs> gives them the ability to do it. Right. I just kind of wanted to, before before I go to fight the fight, I just wanted to hear what Sharpie and Douglas thought. Um, Larry, and I don't know, Larry, if you've got thoughts from what you... No, but when I get back, I'll, I'll send a note around across the United States to all the executive directors and just say, give us some left. Let us know. Yeah. The last thing I want is our budget process to become more time consuming than it is. I'm trying to come up with a way to become more efficient about doing it. I'm a two person office and I need to figure out how to become more efficient and I'm just trying to figure out if this is, if this is an option or not. I guess the overlying question is who 
this is how I interpret it. So, you know, we, the electeds, the role officers are going to come to us, put their need in. We put the final number in for the budget. They can do what they want to, but they still need to come back for approval, you know, to get that in that flow. The question that the state and the cities have is, you set that to your budget, say things start getting gloomy at the end of one, the governor and the mayor had the explicit power to then start changing stuff based on that two-year number and me. I wouldn't know the board when the raw officer sued the county board, but say you have to make that adjustment, you have to give some authority or take that gray area out of there to be able to make that adjustment in the two-year period. So that, that's the one thing they have to Right, but I mean, you know, so many times, and I don't, Bill, are you going to make a comment? Yeah, I'm just going to offer a couple of thoughts. Uh, I'm, I'm new to county government, so I, I don't know if I know all the issues. Uh, my observation going through one budget, budget process here is it is very time consuming. Uh, it's a lot of administrative effort throughout the county, but um, that's not uncommon in, in any organization to do a budget. My experience at the university was they went and they grabbed his work. Budget. The reasons there were really different. They could establish tuition rates for two years, they got a state allocation for two years, and they generally knew what their labor costs were. Um, for us, I see it a little bit different with evaluation. And I've got my my arms around what um, you know if the assessment goes up or down, if you can lock if you really want to lock yourself in, not knowing what that, that uh, assessment value would be that second year. And then the other wrinkle, um, or one other wrinkle would be the allocation, sub-allocation we give out of our 50 cents to other jurisdictions. They would have to be under the same obligation to establish their rates. And in our case, we've got the rural fire districts and others that are that are using up 18 cents of our 50 cents. So, so that's an issue that we have to keep, keep close eye on. Um, 19 cents, sorry. So, you know, but I like, I mean, I like the concept. The restricted funds would be another one. Um, that was one thing I had to really well, struggle with, but that, if that's an annual calculation, I, I don't know how that would work. So, like, the city of Lincoln, when I look at their budget, they do, their biannual budget, their lid that the state has put together is a two year lid. So they, they do that restricted funds calculation for both years at that time of the first year of the budget. So, um, like I said, I'm just, I was just looking to, to hear conversations, to get thoughts, and as we kind of figure out what direction we want to move. The city of Lincoln, when they set their tax rate, is it, is it two years or do they do it every year? They, they, they actually go in the second year and, um, and adopt a, a adopt another resolution. Is that done by a public hearing? Yes. Yep. It is. Public hearing names and comments every year. Yep. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Ten point four. Um, I have seen can actually be discussed in the next item eight in the next meeting. So, um, what we'll do we'll break. And I see in this section, which is a whole move piece, lends into that juvenile discussion. We can take break now until 11 and we'll start back.